I'm Tiffany Stuckey with Arts Altoona Live. Thank you so much for joining us here today at the Altoona Launch Box. Richard and Brittany Hamilton from RLH Wood Sculptures are here to join us today to tell us about uh, their carvings and their business. So as always, don't forget to subscribe to Arts Altoona Live. So to begin, um, what is RLH Wood Sculptures? Um, it's a, a chainsaw carving uh, business done by I do the carving and my wife uh, help helps with um, sales and uh, marketing and Facebook and right. but uh, and you know even she'll finish some of my carvings for me like uh, putting a finish on it but we uh, mainly do chainsaw carvings take a block of wood and use the chainsaw to um, block it out and then we'll use uh, angle grinders and die grinders to f further uh, shape shape the wood into the, uh, the subject that we're trying to go for. And it can be anything from a dinosaur to a pet to just basically any figurine uh, that somebody would want carved. Right. Now, how would you go from start to finish? Like, you know, I'm looking at a block of wood. How do you get these amazing creations out of them? <laughs> um, it would be about probably uh, finding, like, inspiration or a, a good reference uh, picture to then, uh, you know, try to replicate or to go off of because you need a... You need a um, a lot of times you want a, a set uh, vision or you know an I, a goal in mind. Right, right. So once you have that goal, then you need the tools to you know accomplish that. And if it's uh, if it's going to be something out of a, a decent sized log, you're you're going to want to use a probably a chainsaw to remove. Uh, the bigger pieces of material and uh, there's different size uh, blades or uh, bar bar and chains so like it for to be to start with you use a, a bigger bar to uh, remove the bigger pieces and then you'll go down to a smaller bar on your chainsaw to uh, cut e away even uh, smaller pieces right. Right. And it's just, it goes from big to small. And if you work on it too long, you know, you might have a, to a toothpick <laughs> left. But no. Right. Um, but sort of like the stages yeah. of it is um, like blocking out. It's yeah. like stage one. Or, or knowing what you're carving, of course, but the actual getting the wood and then you block it into the shape that you want. Um, and then you, the second step would be to refine that with a smaller saw to go into detail as much as you possibly can with that smaller saw um, and then after that you would start with all of your more hand tools that are power tools but hand tools and you can really add some details um, maybe do the eyes or um, yeah. the feet or the hands whatever that might be um, and then you get into your finish work if you want it burned or you want it painted. Um, now, what's the difference there? Like, it, I know you put like a, a finish on it. Like, how? What's the difference between burning, painting, all of that? Yeah, D could you maybe grab a couple of those items? I got an unfinished piece, a yeah. painted piece, we'll and a anything. and a burned piece. Um, I'm just not, I'm not moving because I have the mic on. I'll let you hold that one. Sure. So this is a, a just a burned piece. It doesn't even have a clear finish on it, which if it did, it wouldn't look uh, too, I mean, it would look pretty much like it does now because it's, it's usually put a, a clear coat on there. Just a little shinier. But the lighter parts are just natural wood. And then this, we use a, a torch. Uh, and burn the wood, and it kind of gives it um, a look that the, the the deer has. It has a darker body right, and a right. lighter lighter spots on the antlers and face and chest. 
Um, this is painted, of course, mm -hmm. because uh, you actually yeah. brought this in after you started doing acrylic paints on canvas. Yeah, this is a dry brush technique. Uh, we paint the wood black first, paint it or, or burn it black. The bottom, you can see, is still wood. And then just lightly apply color to all the that's fascinating. The highlights. <laughs> and then it was clear coated, which yeah. is just a, a sealer for wood to protect it. Like, right. like you would put on your car. Your car has a clear coat. Keep it from uh, right. rusting and stuff. And these, all your sculptures can be outdoor, correct? Or indoor? Yeah. yeah. Indoor, you're going to get the, the most life. I mean, if people put things in things in storage that they want to last or in their homes, uh, you know, picnic tables, anything wooden, telephone poles can last decades outside, right. but they do weather. Um, right. So if you have a roof over something, it's always best, but you can keep it outside for many years and to keep it, uh, to get the most life out of it, you want to keep it off the ground just a little space, probably about an inch or so, and coat it, uh, you know, seasonally or as needed. Most most products uh, say three to four coats is good initially. That gives it uh, the the proper uh, coverage that the uh, material you know recommends right. to be Absolutely. built up three times, three or four times. So why, um, why Altoona, the Blair County region, what makes you do your carving here versus somewhere else? Uh, so he grew up in Altoona, and I moved to Altoona, and we met here. Um, and it's just where our roots have been planted since, which has been like seven or eight years. Um, and we do travel some, like a lot in Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Maryland area. Um, and we spent like four months in Florida. Um, yeah, work, working trips. Right. Um, yeah, work trips, not vacations. <laughs> <laughs> we do not take like any vacations. <laughs> our work trips are our vacations. Um, so, yeah, but Altoona has just been like where family is and where we're beginning to raise our children as well. Yeah. And um, how did you get started in in carving wood it were what were the influences any special teachers um what made you go into this um line of work um well i um i started doing this at at 25 i was i was still in school at the time college um and but i just felt called to to sculpt i, I didn't know if i wanted to do um like bronze or stone, right. but uh, being from Pennsylvania, there there was a lot of chainsaw carvers in Pennsylvania. Right. I ended up me meeting many of them. There's um, really big chainsaw carving events in the state that I went to and got to uh, got to travel with a really great group of uh, carvers early on in my career. Uh, starting out carving yeah. and um, so that after you know after that those experiences it was uh, just something that I stuck with because I really en enjoyed it um, I you know still en enjoy uh, every year there's there's something new I learn with with the trade and the art you can keep getting better yeah yeah, yeah. and keep improving absolutely now um if if somebody who's watching this um would be interested in getting in touch with you about one of your pieces or a custom-made piece which i know you do um where where would they go um what's your what's your information um we have a website um you can even google us just with our name rlh wood sculptures or our website is getchainsawart.com, which is like a little different. So G E T chainsawart.com. So getchainsawart.com. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, um, of course, Facebook, um, which is just RLH Wood Sculptures again. Um, 
our shop, which is on Pleasant Valley Boulevard in Altoona. Okay. People stop there. Our number's up. I get phone calls. Um, yeah, we do a lot of local and non-local stuff. So right. they're searchable. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, t- as we wrap up, uh, do you have any um, dream projects, any interesting projects you're working on right now that you're excited about? Well, right now I'm carving a, a couple bass, they're like fish with okay. some rocks and stuff. So that's kind of different. I've I've carved fish in the past, but um, I'm enjoying doing that right now. Uh, one of the more interesting pieces I think that I carved was uh, I'm a big science fiction fan. I, I nice. did uh, the Terminator, and that was fun to just make a, you know, the Terminator out of a piece of wood. And it looks more like metal than wood because we painted it and, you know, metallic and, um, but I will say, and I'm, you know, it it seems to work out this way, but when I carve something, it, it, a lot of times it, uh, ends up coming true. Like I, I carved a, uh, sort of like a willow tree figurine, uh, pr- a pregnant mother, and then she told me a couple of days later that she was pregnant. That was like the first That's so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> and everyone says, well, why don't you carve like a big uh, stack of money or a, a winning lottery ticket? But It's not quite like that, maybe. Yeah, so I'll get inspired to carve sometimes things. Uh, well, I painted the eagles, uh, just their logo, and before the Super Bowl, and then they won. Right. Just, you know, Beauty it's things coincidences, too, yeah. but it's it's fun to say, like, yeah. yeah. I carved it, and it became true. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're also quite an accomplished painter. Um, we have some of your work hanging behind us. Um, how did you get into that um, in addition to your carving? Um, well, I, I started this January doing like a, a series of, of paintings. Uh, speci- the reason I started is because we have three little ones and doing an activity with them. We got out some paints and uh, yeah, it was, it was all because, you know, they wanted to paint and I, I was showing them, you know, uh, and as I did the first brush stroke, I, I looked at the stroke and I, I liked how that felt and i thought well i'm not i'm going to turn that into a little circle and i I made a little snowman and then uh we uh i said to Brittany, i said why don't you see if that'll sell on uh, facebook well thank you so much both of you for coming um and sharing your passion the woodworking is incredible um and we'll give uh the the audience i'll have some close-up shots as we um have gone through this interview so um Now, audience, it's your turn to share. I hope that you will join in the discussion by leaving a comment below. Uh, Does this video inspire you in some way? Do you have a relevant story to share with our subscriber community? If so, let us know in the comments. Um, If you haven't had the opportunity, please like this video um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and on Facebook at Arts Altoona. We have a weekly newsletter that has something for everybody in Blair County. And audience, thank you so much um, for your part in this um, in ensuring that everyone knows how amazing the Blair County community is and the people and organizations like Richard and Brittany of RLH uh, Wood Sculptures uh, help to make it that way. So we hope to see you next time on Arts Altoona Live.